everybody, and welcome to um, uh, SBC uh, Digital India. Um, we've got a good panel today, a big panel today, uh, talking about marketing and advertising in the uh, in the region. Um, my name is Andy McCarran. I'm the managing director of Sports Betting Community. Um, and as I say, we've got a quite a big, quite a big panel and uh, full of uh, interesting people with lots of things to say on the market. So um, I'm going to ask ask you all to uh, in, uh, give yourself a, a quick introduction. So uh, can we start with Anusosh? Uh, a warm welcome to everybody, and thank you, Andrew, for uh, inviting all of us. Uh, I'll just give a quick introduction for myself. My name is Anikos Strategy. I am the uh, owner and founder of a digital marketing agency called Revenue Street. Uh, been in the gaming industry for more than two decades now. Uh, we primarily uh, focus on channels of acquisition for the gaming industry per se in India. And uh, I'm based out of Hyderabad in the southern part of India. And we have a pretty big team in managing all kinds of gaming verticals. But it's poker, rummy, fantasy, and a little bit of offshore operators as well. And uh, as I said, we are purely focused on gaming and uh, to ensure that you get the highest uh, quality of traffic. Uh, so that's pretty much it for me. Excellent. And um, Satya? Hi, everybody. I'm Satya Mahapatra. And um, we run a consulting company. We help uh, companies in the growth and revenue optimization. And we also mentor startups. Been in the industry for almost 20 years with companies like Buddy Gaming, Gamesys, Jungly Games, blah, blah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, we've had a few uh, connection issues, but uh, Japneet, um, can you hear us? Uh, can you introduce yourself? Okay, we'll, we'll come back to Japneet in a minute. Um, uh, Sebastian. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Obviously, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, to be on this great panel with uh, these guys. Um, my name is Sebastian Paris. I'm CEO at uh, Voice Media. We're an international um, media company or agency. And uh, we've been working for many, many years now in the, in the iGaming industry. We focus on basically helping advertisers and publishers alike in succeeding with their businesses um, in the in the sports media space, to be honest. Um, that means we do media planning and uh, consulting, execution, media buying um, for advertisers. But we also work a lot and primarily with uh, international sports publishers, uh, some of the biggest sports applications and websites in the world, and we help them basically um, get the best um, success for their business and partnerships with iGaming operators. Excellent. And uh, Vishesh? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Vishesh Pantani, uh, CEO at Stock Market Fair. And we are world's first online stock market index-based gaming platform, where players play on any world index just at one platform. So right now, we are running world index of more than seven plus countries. And it's my pleasure to be a part of such a great panel. And special thanks to Andrew and full SBC event team for hosting such an event in India. Thank you. Thank you, Vishesh. And um, yes, we are, we are struggling with our connection with uh, Japneet Sethi, um, who's the India marketing lead for Parimatch International. Uh, for those that don't uh, know, Parimatch, uh, a big and expanding brand uh, with lots of... Um, uh, they do a lot of exciting stuff on the technology and on the marketing side of things. So hopefully we can uh, reconnect uh, with Japneet in a while. So um, the Indian market is obviously uh, one of great potential. Um, the fancy sports, uh, specifically around cricket, is, is massive. And obviously there's a big crossover there of potential for sports betting. Um so this, in, the, in the big Venn diagram, we're uh, talking about marketing, uh, fantasy sports and sports betting will more or less be the same kind of demographic. Um, but what, what we've seen certainly globe, on a global scale is um, a lot of pushback on marketing around um, sports betting and to a lesser degree DFS, although there was a pushback on some fantasy advertising in the US uh, a couple of years ago. Advertising in the US a years ago. Years ago, sorry, got a bit of feedback there. Um, so 
where does the industry need to be careful when it's advertising its products in, in, in marketing its products in uh, the Indian market? Uh, can I go to you first, Anusosh? Mm-hmm. 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 Anusosh, could you hear me? Uh, you're, on, you're on mute, Anusosh. Yeah, 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 I was on mute. So sorry. sorry. As I said, it's That's a very right. important question, Andrew. And I think most of the offshore operators who are trying to enter India or have entered India really want to make it big. And, and they really want to kind of go on board and be overboard. And I, my thought on this is a little conservative and saying that considering the regulatory nature of the industry in India, I think it would not be wise to start doing activities which are per se absolutely uh, illegal as per the laws of the land, uh, which includes maybe television advertisements, maybe radio to a certain extent. And all these things eventually is not good for the industry as a whole. Having said that, I think one of the panel members I was talking to earlier, Sebastian, raised a valid point is that if you are not doing it, whether anybody else would do it, uh, it's a double-edged sword. You know, again, you have to decide what you need to do but I think the patience here is the key. So I think in my opinion, you really need to be a little slow. There are innovative ways to brand yourself through surrogate sites and maybe some other satellite sites, but trying to going overboard, I think will do more harm than good for the industry as such. There's a second point which I want to also highlight is your product. Uh, I think the Indian audiences are fairly a mature and a knowledgeable audience, even from a player perspective. We have to be really honest with our product offering. We should not underestimate the knowledge of an average Indian player who can be very well demanding and also very well educated. When I mean that we should not have misleading statements that you win XX amount of bonuses and the fine print are below, you know, wherever it is, that creates a distrust in the brand. And slowly, Indians are very smart to shift brands from one another to another. Uh, The third is I would like to highlight is something known as ROI. Again, India does offer a big opportunity, but uh, you really need to have a little long-term approach in terms of ROI. It's a very, very different market from the developed economies and from the regulated markets. The LTV is much more elongated. The nuances of the Indian players are very, very different. You really, really uh, reinforce your brand over a long period of time to see some substantial results. So really, again, need to have patience. And thirdly, and lastly, my point is there are many innovative areas There are many innovative channels uh, which, if a brand utilizes, can be both successful from a mass point of view as well as have a very substantial, effective, and efficient medium in terms of ROI. So these are my takes on how we should be careful in terms of advertising. And and, and I think that should be the key is that it's a long-term approach. Have patience and don't go overboard because it's it's a fairly, a little, I would not say complicated, a very different market than the other regulated markets around the world. Thank you. Uh, Jam Needs, I'm not sure if you can hear us. Um, uh, see you've joined us again. I mean, I'm not sure what the uh, the parry match approach is. Um, um, Anutosh is um, saying we need, need to tread softly and, and, and be a bit carefully. Is, does that chime with, with plans that parry match has for the market? I'm struggling again then. So, so Satya, um, uh, what are your views? Do you, th- do you think it's, um, the, the industry is, is capable of um, going soft, softly? Yes, I mean, there are two, two things over here. One is uh, the regulated uh, products where you are allowed to advertise on television and something like sports, which... Uh, which will not get into television because of uh, regulatory issues, because you would be asked to provide a certificate and um, legal documents. So I agree with Anutos also in a way. You have to be subtle in a way uh, while advertising. You cannot, I mean, apart from the players being smart and they understand uh, the how the bonus uh, systems work, you cannot just pitch uh, the game as a money-making game. Because that's not what it is. That's not how this industry was built. We are in the industry because we provide entertainment. And there has to be a fine balance between monetization and entertainment and providing entertainment. And that also should reflect on the television commercial or your video commercials or your display ads 
which uh, you are using in order to acquire players. Excellent. I mean, Sebastian, do you have a view? <clears throat> um, yeah, absolutely. I agree to, uh, to both of the speakers before. I think the number one um, target should be um, to simply protect the youth. Um, and that means that if, if you look at cricket coverage in, in particular, or the, the IPL uh, in, uh, in, in 2020, there was so much advertisement around uh, not just fantasy, but also, um, let's say, more of the gray area um, <clears throat> in gaming. So the restrictions are basically the guidelines that have been put in place now afterwards um, by the uh, ASCI um, were caused by some, I would say, tragic events of, uh, of people, um, not well, uh, some certain suicides that, that happened uh, in the aftermath that were related back to um, to, to gambling issues. Um, I think that it's it's super important to simply um, protect the youth, to protect um, vulnerable players. Um, so as as was said before, um, having really clear guidelines on what is communicated and how is it communicated and who we're targeting uh, with our advertisement is, is incremental in making sure that this beautiful industry um, keeps this very good um, reputation that we focus on entertainment rather than just a money-making uh, machine that without a doubt it can be a money-making machine. Um, it is a very flourishing business, um, but we have to keep in mind why we're doing it and why um, what we want to provide for all the users. Um, so on the one hand side, I think we should maybe slow down a bit on uh, television advertisement and radio, um, especially I think in the digital space, there are much more, um, let's say, subtle ways on approaching users um, than, and, and also in a way of, let's say, more, uh, more targeted digitally, you can target very, very well who you're targeting, you have uh, much better tracking opportunities than you would have on, on radio and television. So you can be accountable um, for the advertisement that you're running. And um, yeah, it's, it's also not so 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 dangerous in terms of the, the, the regulatory bodies. Um, they're focusing, of course, on the main channels, which is TV, which is radio uh, in India. Um, and if you really push too much there, as, as Anatur said before, it can become um, dangerous and we don't want uh, any sort of batting because that will just cause a lot more problems down the road. So we'll try to find a softer approach um, and in the best case scenario, work towards uh, a fully regulated market. Uh, how about, how about uh, you, Vishesh? Um, is there any areas that the industry needs to be careful? Hello. Can, can you just repeat? Yep, yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah, so, uh, so the, for the brands, so whatever advertisement medium they select, uh, that they make sure that the message which they were, com uh, well, I would say, the conveying to customers should be ethical and truthful. There are various laws regarding the uh, deceptive practices and false advertisement. I have seen various advertisers who are actually advertising the wrong fact to the audience. It spreads the wrong SMS to the society. But if they want to advertise that, just advertise in an ethical way. And second point is create a good relationship with your clients, whether they are watching your ad first time or 10th time. There should be a bond between the brand and the customer. No, thank you. Um, we, we're trying to get uh, Japanese connected um, via audio, so hopefully you'll be able to join us in a bit. Um, but until then, uh, I mean, India's um, a massive population, I think it's 1.3 billion, is it? Um, there's obviously lots of different ways um, to uh, get brands in front of a large, uh, a large audience. Um, what, but one of the areas that it seems to be uh, doing particularly well are sort of influencers and uh, some, and brand ambassadors. And I know brand ambassadors is that something that you've used, uh, Satya. I mean, how how important are the influencers in the Indian market? Uh, 
In the Indian context, uh, influencers are extremely important because uh, India as a country uh, sometimes promotes uh, movie stars or sports uh, personalities or achievers in any any particular field, any verticals to some sort of a demigod status. So any industry you are in, any product you want to market, if you get hold of the right kind of an influencer then definitely you get very good roi from this kind of advertising and for a live example is uh, i had uh, used two brand ambassadors for jungli rami one of the products that i used to manage and uh, it was probably the first time uh, any online company had uh, got uh, brand ambassador and it helped us multiply our bottom line and uh, our uh, volumes in a few months time that's that's the kind of impact uh, it gave us sata you, you said earlier you using um uh, not actually sports people but um uh, people with profiles from from film i mean is uh, were they more successful in reaching the audience than than sport than form sports people the fact of the matter is uh, rami is uh, primarily played in the southern indian states so uh, it uh, appeals to uh, appeals more to players from andhra pradesh telangana tamil nadu karnataka maharashtra and kerala so we had to pick up a brand ambassador we had to pick up two actually brand ambassadors uh, who were uh, basically appealing to these markets we could have picked up uh, sports people also but we preferred uh, movie stars because uh, in this particular reason movie stars are considered to be gods and there's not one god the multiple gods for them like every state has like at least 5 uh, to 10 movie stars whom they treat as gods but for a product like fantasy if you ask me i would have preferred taking a, a sports person or a cricketer as a brand ambassador Okay, interesting. I mean, Vishesh, what uh, do you have a view on uh, the use of influencers and ambassadors? Yes, so actually influencer marketing is one of the fastest growing industry in India. And nowadays it is a priority of every advertiser. It has grown to about I think 300% this year. And 65% of advertisers are using influencer marketing as a strategy of user acquisition. so basically in india influencer marketing help brands for better engagement and brand recalling also even it also reduces the cost of user acquisition excellent how about how about you and you tosh um what's your what's your view on the uh... andrew i think the biggest advantage obviously uh, satya and vishesh have given a quick background of how important influencer marketing is but primarily boils down to three or four things uh, india is primarily a young country so you know 65% of the population is below the age of 35 and these young people are really as satya was saying uh, they consider these influencers as semi god or demi god and they really follow them on a day to day basis so they are like this facebook and instagram crazy people the millenniums number one so obviously there is a big connection and these influencers resonate well with the with the uh, with with your uh, you know user uh, whom you want to acquire secondly uh, being a new brand uh, attaching an influencer really creates that trust it creates that credibility that this influencer is some who is local actually creates that trust factor and the people will connect to that influencer whoever you have whether it's a movie star or a cricketer a much more closely but i think the core objective with an influencer uh, uh medium is to have a very consistent approach has to be a much more long term approach in having influencers on different categories here again one of your next questions which i see was regionalism i think in india you should not only just consider pan india influencers you can even pin down to local influencers as well who are very very popular within a particular segment india being such a large country it's it's important for you to really segment those influencers based on language based on region based on the medium maybe entertainment something food or stuff like that so yeah i agree with all of them but having said that the most important thing is that they create trust uh, and importantly they are a very good medium for you to acquire your users at a very easy process i think that's a great time for jamney to join us can you hear us jamney 
I was not able to connect. Yes, uh, we we can just about hear you. If you if you could speak a little bit louder, that'd be excellent. Um, we were so we were just talking about yes, yes. Um, influencers and brand ambassadors, and that's something that Parry Match yeah. in particular have been very very good at utilising. Um, one particular yeah. standout is um, a deal you've got with a, a UFC fighter, Conor McGregor. Um, yeah. I was wondering, um, yeah. uh, will that approach inform how you um, a attract uh, players in the Indian market? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So first of all, I, I've actually missed out on a lot of uh, discussion right now, but let me just pitch, pitch in very quickly. You know, of course, for the Indian market, let's have a look at the ecosystem of the entire influencers in India. Uh, one factor that comes into consideration is the penetration of social media in the country. And the second one is, of course, the influencers uh, is, you know, what people look up to. But again, you know, when we talk about influencer as an approach, as a medium, uh, the approach has to be very careful, especially when you're talking about the betting segment. Because, uh, you know, from our past experiences and in different markets, no influencer, even if we talk at global or in a local market, no influencer would want to directly associate themselves with a betting brand. You know, the kind of communication that we talk about, no influencer wants to make, no influencer wants to make a clear-cut communication and associate themselves uh, uh, with a sports betting, especially when you're working in a market which is highly sensitive, highly volatile, uh, you know, uh, and where the word sports betting is slightly in to the nation, right? Uh, globally, also, when you talk about sports personalities, they try to distance themselves somewhat, uh, you know, while directly not communicating the message of betting, even if it is legal, legal you know, especially when you talk about cricket as a game. Uh, the factor being uh, main responsible here is the history of the sport that we've seen. So what I see is education here is very important rather than changing the perception because when you educate people uh, with, the, with the right set of uh, factors, with the right set of keywords, with the right set of communication, that is how you change the perception. So rather than using influencers to just change the perception of uh, a very you know volatile keyword, uh, a keyword which is seen <coughs> using very harsh words, but a keyword, a, a word which is seen as a taboo, uh, you should focus on communication which educates, educates the audiences. So basically, change should come from the people uh, who you look up to, which, which are the influencers. They are a very important part of uh, this communication. And just to make that change, you need those influences to make the right set of communication. That's how I feel uh, that is the power of an influencer uh, when it comes to the Indian market. Uh, the main message should be to take the right set of approach to educate the audiences and then change the perception of the entire game in the country. That's, that, that's what I feel. Excellent. Thank you. Um... Uh, we well, I mean, like I say uh, influencers are one of one of the uh, one of the way of, of reaching such a, a, a diverse uh, and large population, um, and, and you know they use a, a range of social platforms. But um, this is something I want to bring you into, Sebastian. I mean, what media platforms alone are the most successful in reaching the end users? Uh, let alone the ones that just used by influencers. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I think. A bit uh, touching on what we what we discussed earlier. I mean, um, obvious platforms are, are TV and print, which are still uh, today the, the biggest forms of, uh, of, of advertising medium in India. But digital, of course, is, is catching up is a lot. Digital in India is uh, by far the fastest growing um, sector. Is going to eventually is going to outgrow um, TV and print. So, on the one hand side, I would only I would certainly say okay, TV and print are uh, advertising sectors to to be looking at. Um, we at BOS Media, we focus on digital only, uh, and in digital, we focus specifically on mobile. And this fits extremely well with, uh, with India because India is truly a mobile first and, and, and almost to say mobile only um, country. You have a huge part of the population um, which are spending um, two and a half hours on, on, of their days um, on their mobile phones. Um, in uh, in mobile apps only, right? And uh, seventy over seventy percent on that is on social media and gaming and so on. So there's so much interaction 
on on mobile phones. So for me specifically, or for us, um, I think that one of the best and most interesting um, opportunities to reach out um, the user is on their mobile phones. Now, if you talk specifically about gaming, we believe that the closest you can actually get um, to certain live events or live sports, the better it is. So, so um, we work very, very closely with um, the biggest sports applications in India. That is primarily, um, of course, uh, cricket uh, sports applications. And those provide very, very unique uh, and it's actually um, creative ways of engaging with a huge audience. Um, other than that, of course, social media, we've touched it before, social media is extremely um, powerful itself. You have the influence of marketing as a, as a whole. Um, to a bit extend on what we what we discussed before, I think in influence marketing, there are two ways to look at it. One, you have basically the celebrities, the, the brand ambassadors, and then you have the digital influencers, which could be uh, YouTubers, Instagrammers, uh, TikTokers, uh, before they were banned. I mean, they're still active, but... Uh, not new users. Um, so you have all this spectrum of social media. And then, of course, also you have um, OTT platforms, right? Um, so thanks to companies like Geo, which which had an absolute incredible impact um, to India and have pushed the digitalization of India. And, uh, you know, when, when they started in 2006 and with the ingenious campaign of just providing hundreds of millions of, of Indians um, with uh, free data, um, so that combination of, of free data but in the beginning and still very, very cheap data and, uh, and affordable mobile phones is pushing this mobile growth uh, so much in, in, uh, in India. So, yeah, at the end of the day, um, for us, it's, it's a very clear mobile first approach. Look at uh, sports applications. This is, I think, the closest that you can get to um, the targeting audience, the people that we're looking at. You have all the um, tracking opportunities in the world. You can have clearly disclaimers um displayed to ensure brand safety and of course you can track you can have age gating and everything um and it's it's where the future is 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 moving um we're expecting i think 175 million new users uh on on mobile in india in the next few years this is an insane amount of of, uh, of users and uh tapping into that market successfully in the next couple of years is going to be um an absolute key objective for any gaming brand um, I'm not sure if you if you caught all that, Japneet. So, is that something you'd agree with? Uh, see, what I feel is uh, with uh, these media platforms, you need to understand the whole ecosystem. The ecosystem in India, especially you know when you talk about the market like India, the whole ecosystem runs on trust. You know, you have to understand the psyche of our rational Indian. You know, a rational Indian, even if he invests one rupee, he will make sure that it gets in the safe hands. What I feel is, when you when you uh, prepare, you when you work on your marketing strategy, it needs to have, especially when you're working with a tightly knit community, the best thing that works is community marketing, right? Uh, you reach out to these people in the groups, in the communities, on the media, where these people are present the most. See, what I feel is, uh, on the one hand, Sports marketing, sports betting, it's, it's one of the easiest. But on the other hand, it's one of the tough. Uh, easy because it's a mass market, you know. Uh, everybody knows when a child is born in India, when he reaches an age of an adult, he's exposed to a communication where, where we talk about betting, right? We don't want to, uh, you know, get into those games. We don't want to actually bet on those games. But everybody is exposed to these kind of communications. But... On the other hand, the community which plays, it's a very tightly knit community. So you look out for media platforms where these people are present the most. You know, you get into their, uh, the mediums which are more personal to you. Like, for example, I would take this example of, uh, let's talk about Telegram, for example. Right? Telegram, as, as, as a platform, it's a very tightly knit. You know, everyone uh, on these platforms, they are running. There are multiple brands running on these platforms. There are multiple money brands. There are multiple i gaming brands. There are multiple real money gaming brands working on these platforms. So you need to find those platforms where you can target your PG at a personal level rather than going mass. Yes, mass mass platforms would work for a mass audience, especially when you try to work on your communication on a mass level. 
you know, you, you prepare those bank commercials, you prepare certain communication, you know, tap on the mass market. But this mass market wouldn't eventually give you a huge, you know, wouldn't eventually uh, give you a regular high roller revenue. But eventually, when you tap on those segments uh, where these guys are present the most, that tightly knit community, it would eventually convert into more and more money. And that's how you create that revenue. So what we feel is, when you reach out to the end users, you keep mass platforms in the conservation to generate those, uh, you know, how do you say that, bread and butter for the brand. But eventually, the, the people who would convert, who, who would give you the cream, are the people who are present on these private communities. So the single line message would, would be, uh, focus on community marketing, uh, find out influencers within the community, create those influencers, reach out to these people. You know, I also come from a uh, poker background, which is, which is, uh, it is again a very tightly knit community. You would count, you can count people on your hands. You know, this is a high roller player, this is a fish, he's a shark, right? But that is how also that community works. Even though you reach out to masses, uh, with the poker communication, but eventually the high rollers, the stream of uh, the revenue comes from the cycling net community. So find out platforms where you can tap onto these users on a personal level, uh, go into marketing to community, do community marketing, but keep mass platforms as a part of your marketing strategy. That is the best way of reaching on to these people. Especially when reaching out to an Indian who is spending his money from his pocket. No, good insight. Um, and Sashil, are you about to say something? Um, no, about what? About the influencers, right? Uh, no, no. We, we sort of uh, which which media platforms will be sort of um, uh, which are the, are the most effective. Okay, so, you know, uh, again, uh, I think I would uh, to a large, very large extent uh, agree with Japneet. It all depends on. I think you can categorize into online versus offline. And again, offline, you have very limited avenues because of the regulatory nature. And within that online, I think there are many avenues. You have the affiliate channel, you have the influencers channel, you have the display, you have the, uh, you know, <clears throat> some little bit of a search campaign. You have many other campaigns. But in, in order for you to pinpoint a particular channel, I really need to spread your all your you cannot put all your eggs in one basket so you need to spread across all those channels available and as i was saying earlier in my conversation there are many innovative areas uh, which you can try out uh, to see how the product is functioning purely because it's a gray niche of the market so it's very difficult to pinpoint a single particular area of which channels work it's again uh, it's a try and experimenting and see which works and which doesn't work and every band engages with a different channel in a different way so I, I know certain brands like Bet365 were in India for a very long period of time. I don't think they do, do, do any kind of a marketing, but their brand itself is such powerful that they have a more of a pull mechanism. For a newer brand, they need to invest more in a more you know instant results. For a brand which is fairly established, they need to kind of try and expand their horizon to a much wider audience. So I think you cannot pinpoint to a single area. You really need to have a much more localized content. And I think content creates revenue. I think that's that's the key here is no matter what you do, you really need to have a lot of local content and then only it will help in your ROI in terms of which media channels work. Well, I mean, that, that's something that we were talking about earlier with uh, Vishesh, you know, uh, national campaigns or, or regional campaigns. Um, I mean, what's your view on that, Vishesh, again? Yes, so according to my opinion, uh, regional campaigns are more effective than national campaigns. The reason behind is the need of customer can be taken care of beyond their differences. Thus, customer satisfaction can be achieved in regional campaigns. Regionalization ensure effectiveness and efficiency for the promotion techniques. Uh, a good brand image can be established and loyal customer can be retained. In the industry, loyal customers is everything. If you have a loyal customer, he will generate your revenue today or tomorrow. And uh, the next, understanding the need of, lo of each local and regional market. And the last point is establish consistency. While it is important to localize communication plan for a specific market within the region, 
the underlying message in each market should be consistent in other words the regional marketing strategies may need to have localized re uh, relevance of each market even for the uh, local campaigns you can reevaluate your marketing strategies faster and better uh, and uh, in the uh, in your last question of influence marketing uh, in uh, uh, in that also I'm sorry, Vishesh. I think we might have lost you there. Apologies for that. Um, just a quick one. We're getting some questions coming in. Um, is anybody in India using Clubhouse? Um, I don't know if you know that, Satya. Are you familiar with the... Um, I'm, I'm assuming it's an app called Clubhouse. And you saw yeah, Clubhouse. Clap oh, sorry, Go on. I think I think uh, just just to, to to jump in there, um, from from what I know is uh, the majority of Clubhouse users is actually coming from from Germany. Um, is what what I see here. I'm I'm not so sure. I think LinkedIn is also uh, very much used in in India, but in the Germanic speaking countries, Clubhouse has taken over completely all the B2B um, channels in the past, let's say one two weeks, um, and it's been absolutely uh yeah it's been it's um, it's been crazy to to see uh clubhouse uh succeed and there's lots of users from 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 germany but also now uh in, in the us starting a lot um i don't know for for anyone who's not familiar with clubhouse basically uh an invite uh only uh at least now is an invite only um application is uh, it's an audio only application where you have different kinds of channels and there's a number of specific number of uh, of people talking on a panel like we do here just mm -hmm. now and uh, very similar basically um you have people talking about a, a variety of, of different topics and uh and then there are hundreds and hundreds or maybe thousands of, of listeners and it started off more or less privately in, in private communications um but through kind of also uh really let's say b2b influencers um pushing the app and and, and really discussing also discussing kind of their 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 B2B secrets and, and, and sharing a bit of their secret sources in their channels. Uh, it has blown up a lot and has provided a lot of um, values and insights on how other people are doing it. And I've, I've heard from a lot of people, um, they're getting uh, great insights there. Whether it's, whether it's uh, any sort of relevance in India, I don't know. Understand. Okay. No, I mean, that question came from Leanne Johnson, who's the CEO of Affiliate Insider. Um, she's actually moderating the next session of today, uh, and that's talking about affiliates in India. So um, I'm sure Leanne will go into a bit more of that. But you know, Clubhouse is it's a new one to me, so that's interesting. I've got another question here, if you don't mind, from um, uh, Andrew Reader of Velo Partners. It fits into what Vishesh was saying before, although we've just lost him again. Um, are there any lessons learned by the panel from the skill gaming advertisers, such as Rummy? It says many states have closed down on the back of too many, too much advertising, uh, and the wrong kind of message, making it a politicized <laughs> issue. So um, Vishesh, you're back on. I'm not sure if you heard that question, um, but um, what, what what can the industry learn from the, the skill gaming advertisers and the experience that they've had? Now, something you could take, maybe, Satya, if, if this is still struggling. Yeah, I think uh, two major lessons here. One which we have elaborated during this discussion is the message or the content. So mm -hmm. as a company, Jungli Rami always uh, tried to uh, put forth a message which was like Rami is um, family uh, played game. You play with your family, friends, pastime, and a little bit of uh, um, appealing to your brain types, like because it's a highly skilled game. I mean, uh, um, I think probably if you don't know how to play Rami, even if you have the best of the cards, it's very unlikely that you would win. But uh, unfortunately, there were a few operators who had uh, messaging such as uh, make money quickly, win a lot of money, so and so uh, won 100,000 rupees, so and so won a car. That kind of commercials running on television 
on a regular basis was um, detrimental for the industry today. Today, the bans uh, obviously happened due to problem gamblers taking uh, incorrect decisions, unfortunate decisions. But then uh, it got aggravated because of uh, these uh, advertisements which were on the face all the time with the decision makers, I would say. So Andrew is right in a way. Okay, interesting. Um, Vishesh, I'm, I'm, I hope you can join us. Um, is it, would anybody else want to weigh in on that? No, okay, that's fine. Um, one of the one of the interesting questions from um, Logan Jory uh, at the start, and this might be something um, that you can kick off on, Japneet. Um, do you think advertising is better done by creating products rather than running campaigns? Uh, make it more of a pull rather than a push, um, and that way you can um, uh, protect yourself against regulations if if you're marketing heavy. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat the question, please? Sorry, do you yes, think... The, yes, sorry, Jeremy. Do you think the marketing is better done by creating products rather than running campaigns? Rather than running campaigns, what? Sorry? Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, is how 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 useful, uh, how much of an advantage do you get from being able to offer a, a, a different kind of product compared to the rest of the market? How much of a leg up in in the marketing message does that give you? Sorry, I'm not able to actually catch. No, 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 that's, that's no problem. Sure. No, I mean, it's, and Andy, it's if, if, if you want, I can take this one, maybe. Yeah, please do. I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt, but um, I think I think this question applies to basically any market, right? And and also comes back to um, you know, how how to be successful it depends on how do you define success, right? What's your what's your uh, what are your goals? What are your KPIs? Do you want to be top three brand? Then you need to um, basically excel, um, excel in everything. Um, I, I really like this question when it comes to pull and push because it also uh, aligns very well with Anatosh, as you mentioned before, um, Bet365. Um, when you have a company, when you have a brand and you see that with many different um, operators, at the end of the day, if you don't have the product um, that is going to suit the market, um, you're not going to succeed anywhere. You can do all the media spend that, that you want. You can be extremely creative in uh, in and targeting users and in, in, in being totally responsive, uh, responsible in, in the messaging. You can do everything right in marketing, but if you don't have the product that is um, keeping the users, then you're just basically spending lots and lots of money in marketing, and it's, it's not going to give you any um, return in the in the midterm or to the to long term. So product is always key in, in, in retaining the users. And, and as we said many times before, everything comes down to entertainment. It's about safe gambling. It's about um, it's about entertaining the users. So um, we can talk uh, for hours and hours and hours of uh, what are the most creative ways, what are the safest ways of, um, of advertising, but at the end is, is product is key. But if you only rely on a, on a basically on a pull strategy and saying we have the greatest product and eventually people will come to you, that is not the case either because there are going to be other brands that are either outspending you um, or being basically outsmart you in terms of advertising. You have the whole affiliate space, and if you're in the affiliate space um, and you don't find a good way of working, um, you don't find the right way of working with affiliates on on, on nurturing on these potential partnerships, then they are going to push other brands. Um, so you need to be smart in any market that that you're working with, and having I think a very healthy and good mix of pull and push to at the end they really really be successful. Yeah? You cannot rely on on just either one. Um, and this applies to, to any market globally, whether that's the Indian market with a cricket focus or whether that's any other market um, in the world. Thanks, Sebastian. Uh, yeah. save there. I mean, um, I didn't want to mention the C word, but um, it's it's something that looks like it might still be with us for, for a good while longer. Um, COVID, how has that uh, changed how um, people are marketing? Um, uh, to, the, to the audience at the moment. Is that something uh, you can talk on, you, Anusosh? 
Well, obviously, uh, yeah, it's it's the most uh, obvious question in every discussion which we have is how has COVID or uh, has affected. Well, from an Indian perspective, obviously, we had one of the largest lockdowns uh, for a number of people uh, globally. So we were pretty much in a lockdown for about two uh, two months uh, with 1.3 billion people staying at home. That definitely, uh, in my extent, in my view, elaborated or extended and uh, the market in terms of people staying indoors and, and you know, watching a lot of content, whether it's gaming, entertainment, OTTs and stuff like that. So there has been a, a, a change of behavior where the market has expanded even for the gaming industry as such. People who were not even aware of what was happening in the gaming maybe have got associated simply because they are stuck at home. They have nothing else much to do. So that's the first point. But I think as we move forward, uh, this 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 particular anomaly of COVID happening between this whatever time frame, maybe another year or two, uh, will eventually die down and it will again come back to basics. We should not rely too much of this unprecedented event that this event has created. I don't know whether it's a benefit or a loss or an advantage or a disadvantage. Uh, is definitely something of a case study which we can read. But eventually this event will pass on. And again, when we are back in normal times, quote, I think it's again the basics which we need to focus on uh, your brand, your product, your localization, and stuff like that. You may be lucky within this period. You may have expanded your audiences, but eventually going forward, again, it will come down to very basics. That's my take on, on COVID, at least for this industry. How are you, Vishesh? Have you, what have you noticed? Oh, we've just lost Vishesh again. Um, that's a shame. Well, Satya, does that chime with what you've seen? Yeah, Anutosh is right. Uh, the industry, uh, primarily our industry, gaming industry, uh, saw a huge uh, surge in uh, volumes during the COVID times. And uh, OTT industry as well uh, saw a huge surge. But uh, the surge, uh, the percentage has already dropped down. It happened for the first couple of months where everybody experienced almost like 100% uh, between like 25 to 150% uh, growth in the bottom lines and the volumes. But it stabilized uh, three months later, and now it's uh, already back to square one for uh, uh, almost all uh, companies. And uh, probably uh, this situation will last for another six to 12 months. So anything can happen. Let's just hope for the best. But anything can happen. Things can go south as well. Uh, Japneet, uh, as how is COVID? Industry, I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, Japneet, um, how has COVID uh, made you change uh, your approach to the market? Yeah. Well, you know, of course, uh, because of the pandemic, you know, I shouldn't mention it, but you know. So, sorry, Jamni. It's, 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 Jamni. Sorry, it's 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 quite difficult yeah. to hear. Could you, could you just try a bit louder, please? Is it, is it better now? That sounds much better. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So you know, uh, with the pandemic situation in the entire country, in, in the country like India, you know, uh, everybody has seen that the gambling segment and the betting segment has gone all time high. Uh, I was looking at the stats from uh, different uh, OTT segments, different uh, gaming segments, uh, reports from different uh, gaming companies released, right? Uh, reports from uh, social, reports from uh, the, the IPL that happened, reports from uh, team, the TRPs, everywhere. You know, the consumption of media, especially the digital media, has gone all time high. And, you know, it has, uh, everyone here would agree with this, that, you know, it has actually worked in the favor of the industry. You know, uh, when this ends, when this pandemic ends, everybody would have realized the potential of this industry has in terms of, uh, you know, when it comes to a regulation, uh, in terms of uh, the revenue, the potential revenue it has for the market, uh, the approach was pretty much simple, you know. Uh, it's all digital. G gaming is it's all digital. Gambling it's all digital. What better than than using the 
means uh, all platforms which the audience is uh, con- the consumption is all time high on these platforms so so the approach was pretty much simple aim for the platform that has maximum consumption aim for the platforms that have the maximum prp you know aim for the trending aim for the local events aim for the trending events which has the high visibility and that's it your, your marketing is done you know since it was all digital uh it was a no brainer for all of us so i think the situation i'm sorry to say this but the situation has actually worked in the favor favor of this entire industry uh when this ends the good thing about this is the the stakeholders would have realized the value of regulating the industry and i think it will it will be a, Yes, there will be some change in the strategy when it comes to your marketing communications. Some change in the channels, but I don't think it would be a major change because this, you know, when it comes to a gambler, gambler's instinct, a gambler's habit, uh, you know, the 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 PG who are uh, who are actually into this segment, the gamers, the players would actually, would actually keep on playing. You know, might be some shift in. some shift in the, the terms of the kind of uh, money put in into the system but i think it should be a larger it should be a larger change fantastic i mean um, uh, sebastian what's what's uh, bys uh, seen across all the different markets when it comes to covid is it pretty similar um i would say i mean we're trying to see the the good um in in, in all of this to be honest um Well, without a doubt, COVID has struck the whole sports and and, and sports media market significantly. Um, we've seen all kinds of um, sports betting operators and and, and sports media um, companies struggling very very much um, in the in the let's say in the first outbreak in the first month. Luckily, in the second half of 2020, uh, we were able to regain a lot of those uh, strength and a lot of those um, users back into the, the sports platforms and uh, on both sides of, of the operator as well of uh, like uh, users of, of sports publishers. I think the whole, everything that has, has happened in, in the last year has, on the one hand side, has accelerated digitization even further. Um, and I think this is, this is really also a chance for India we've seen uh so much of the market so much of the gambling market being done uh let's say on the ground with uh, with betting agents and so on trying to um maybe at least from my perspective moving away from that into um a safer and regulated market um with the digitalization kind of leading the way um there's a huge possibility on the other hand um this the whole gambling topic has become incredibly sensitive even more so we have seen that in in a number of european countries for example uh, we've had additional restrictions or complete bans on advertising for gambling put in place um during um, let's say that the hot phase of of, of covid-19 last year simply because i would say often it comes down to governments not necessarily understanding really how the the the, the gaming entertainment industry works and they have simply put a, a complete ban on on advertising um instead of really trying to to regulate it better uh, and making sure that safe gambling is is possible so on the one hand side it's a huge chance uh, it's a huge chance for for india and uh, in in pushing further kind of the digital movement and pushing further for uh, a, a regulated regulated market in the future hopefully on the other hand uh, basically touching the the beginning where we wanted to um, outline a lot we have to be super careful um because lots of people are vulnerable the youth is vulnerable um lots of people have had uh, huge negative impacts on their lives and businesses um and in some markets you see this kind of uh, contrary trend of um kind of the worse and the worse the economy gets or the worse the the social situation gets the more people tend to to gambling and especially in those cases we need to be in this industry and as as leaders in this industry we need to be extra careful and uh, and super responsible in our messaging to to our audience because we don't want to lead them into believing that you know uh, this is the way to get out of your maybe um, personal hazard by by winning x amount uh, which is a sure bet it's not happening we are trying to um, offer them great forms of entertainment um 
affordable ways of entertainment um, that can make their lives um, better, that can make their lives uh, happier and provide basic different entertainment options. And then especially, I mean, batting on cricket is, is amazing or fantasy sports and, and <laughs> poker has had its, its, its renaissance during, during COVID. This is amazing to provide people with, uh, with forms of entertainment, with a bit of an escape when they're at home, locked down, um, and they try to um, manage their new free time as, as best as possible. But it, it goes both ways. And uh, as much as there's a chance, there's also um, a risk. And, and, and all of us, we have to take a huge responsibility in pushing it into the right direction. Yeah. I think we can all agree with that. Um, we've come into the end of the session now. Um, uh, thanks, for everyone, for bearing with us, and thanks for the questions that have come in. Um, I've just got one last question uh, to each of the panellists. Uh, should, If real money sports betting is going to be regulated, what one piece of advice would you give to new brands looking to enter the market? Um, I'll go to you first, Vishesh, with that. Or at least I'll try. Hello, Vishesh. So, yeah. so uh, quite quickly, what one piece of advice would you give to new brands looking to enter the market? Uh, for, for the brands, whosoever is entering in the market, they must know the user behavior of that geography. The right data of market will always help any brand to enter in any market, whether it's India or overseas. The data is everything. So, nextly, uh, they should identify how many competitive companies are already existing in the market. Is there any room for our new business to capture a portion of a market share or not? And how can they re innovate their game according to the Indian customer taste? Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Satya, what would, what would your one piece of advice be? Yeah, I think uh, any new companies uh, entering into the Indian market post uh, the market getting regulated uh, should understand uh, that uh, because it was a gray market till date and probably there would be some gray areas because all the regulations might not kick in from day one. Uh, like uh, UK or any other countries, it took a long time before they could uh, agree on player protection, they could agree on taxation, they could agree on problem gambling, they could agree on responsible gambling, responsible advertising. So a new entrant needs to take care of all these uh, factors in order to stay here for long, because India is a pretty large market. And if sports betting opens up, probably it would be a sizable market for any company across the world. And I would say, again, uh, basically maintain the balance between monetization and uh, entertainment. Excellent. Thank you. Anutosh, what would you your place. <laughs> Exactly. Um, Anutosh, what would be your one bit of advice? I think uh, it's about local nuances. India is a very large country, very diversified country. Different regions behave differently. Different people behave differently. It's very, very important that you understand the local nuances from a product point of view, consumer point of view, UI point of view, UX point of view. If you can understand the Indian nuances, I think half of the battle is won for you if you are, if it, you are entering into a regulated market. Excellent. Thank you. And Sebastian? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say if you want to enter the Indian market, give it the attention and, and, and uh, the resources that it deserves. It's an absolute incredible opportunity. Um, very few that, that we've had in, in, in the past decades. And I believe that if you, if you as a company, as a new operator, if you don't have a local presence already, um, find, uh, find a good partner. Reach out to, co to companies like Anatoj, like, uh, like such like ourselves. Uh, that can help you in, in navigating this market, that can help you in, in how to um, achieve your, your targets and how to communicate um, you know, with the localization uh, into taken into account with those people. And I think every company that, that wants to succeed um, in South Asia or even Southeast Asia in the, in the, in the coming years um, needs to be dedicated towards those markets. And it, it won't work as just a a spillover market where you're going to have some some success on the way you have to have the dedication uh it's the reason why we ourselves for example 
Fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, you should Jenny, build a team because in order to succeed, you need to do that. Sorry. 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 There's a, there's a break of connection there. Japneet, um, I won't uh, ask you to share yeah. some of your secrets with any potential um, potential competitors that are coming in. Um, as we've come to the end of the uh, end of the hour, I just want to thank everybody um, for joining in and uh, being part of the uh, part of the discussion. And I hope you enjoy these this to the rest of today and the rest of tomorrow at SBC Digital India. Thank you. Speak to you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you, you, Andy. Great. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.